Happy Tuesday, friends. It's Jen Pitta with By the Shore Stamping in for another Teach Me Tuesday video. Um, today, I'm actually doing a special request from uh, one of you lovely ladies. Chris, thank you so much for sending this suggestion. I love triple stamping, and I'm super excited to share it with you all today. It's not a new um, technique, and it's certainly not one that I created, but it's a lot of fun to play with. So let me show you, um, first off, I'll show you, this is the stamp set that we're going to use today. This is one of my faves. It's actually one from the last year's annual catalog. It was new last year. Um, I'm still waiting on my big box of goodies. It should still, it should be here actually momentarily, probably. Um, but I have all sorts of new goodies coming from the brand new catalog. But today we're going to feature this one because it is one of my favorites. It was actually the suite that was named after me. Not really, but I like to say that. It was the By the Shore sw Stamping Suite from last year. So um, I obviously love it. And then we're also going to use Dapper Denim, Calypso Coral, and Crumb Cake Ink today. So nice beachy theme. This is the card we're going to do. So um, we're going to do this triple stamping technique. So you'll actually get to stamp, you can see, over all three layers. So it's a really fun technique. It looks really cool and challenging, but it's actually super simple. And what I love most about it is that it's super forgiving. So you really can't mess this up, I promise. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to move this. And first I'm going to share with you um, the measurements and whatnot that you'll need. So we're going to do some layering here. Um, I'm going to start first, and I'll put all of these measurements in the description of the video below so you can just click the little arrow below to get all of the measurements so you can recreate this card on your own but I will run through it now too so you can see how the layering works so your first piece is going to be a standard card base which is eight and a half by five and a half and then we're going to fold that in half and that will give you your standard card base we're going to do a side fold today all right so there is my card base next up we're going to take a piece of whisper white and um, you can obviously use any color you'd like, but I used the neutral and I went with the bright white. And I'm going to do four by five and a quarter. So this is your standard card mat when you're matting um, a card. Anyway, next layer is going to be Calypso Coral. And this one is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I actually gave a, quite a bit of room between these two because I like for the image to be able to show on this outer layer very well. Um, generally, you'll notice when we're layering these white pieces that they're going to be about a quarter of an inch apart. So you'll see quarter of an inch from this one to this one, quarter of an inch from this one to this one, and you'll see the same on the top layer too. This white layer is three, um, three by four, this little middle one. Next up, we have another small Calypso Coral. So again, I added a little more space in here. I think this is a half an inch this time. Um, this one is two and a half by three and a half. And then the small one is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. So again, you'll notice there's only a quarter of an inch difference between each of the layers. And that is super helpful because it helps you be able to see the full image, but it also covers any of those little boo-boos that will happen automatically with this technique. It's just part of the game, but it's so forgiving and it will not matter. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so first step, what we want to do is we're going to stamp just on the white layers. We don't want those Calypso Coral layers included. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all those pieces out. So I'm going to take that piece out. I'm going to take that piece out, and I'm going to take this piece out. Next up, we're going to take this um, stack of white. And sorry, it's white on white, but hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to layer those in the center of my paper here. And I'm going to try and get them as centered as possible. And again, um, this is super forgiving, so don't freak out about it. You can, if you want to, put a little bit of um, the removable adhesive or even just a tiny bit of regular adhesive um, in, on the back there to kind of hold those in place. I tend to just wing it. Like I said, they're super forgiving, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm going to also take um, a, let's see what I need. I didn't get myself prepped very well here. I actually did this video once from start to finish already and right in the middle somebody called me and I didn't think it would show up on the video and guess what? It did. So <laughs> I apologize. This one might um, take me a little bit longer than the other one because I had everything kind of prepped and ready for that one, but I think we'll still be good. All right, so first step, I'm going to go ahead and take my little fish and I'm using the Dapper Denim ink. And I'm going to go ahead and just stamp him kind of randomly 
all over these three layers. Now I'm going across all three layers and you'll see, this is what I mean by see how there's like that big white space right here between the two layers, which looks really bad when you're looking at it like this, will look totally fine when you put all the layers in between it. So don't panic, I promise this will work, okay? Um, I am putting a little bit of pressure on these when I stamp it because you are going across three layers. Again, you don't want to do any rocking and rolling because that will catch the edge of the stamp and then you'll get those ugly little marks at the top or bottom of your image. You just want to kind of press and hold and put a little bit of oomph into that. Next up, I'm taking Calypso Coral and another little fish. And I purposely picked a fish that was going this way and one that was going the other way, just for design purposes. I think it looks kind of neat that way. So first up, I'm going to put one in the middle here. And then I'll do one up here. Again, I'm going across three layers, so I'm going to press and hold for a minute. Again, I'm going to get spots that are missing, and it's totally fine. Do not panic. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another one down here. And since I already did this once, and I learned from my mistake last time, I'm going to do something a little bit different from the one I just did. I'm learning, see, when I do them multiple times. I'm going to do my bubbles next. So I'm going to take the little bubbles and the Calypso Coral ink, and I'm going to put that above this fish, one above that fish, whoops, and I moved this slightly so I'll move it back, but again, it doesn't really matter all that much. You want to kind of keep it straight as best as possible, but don't freak out about it. Um, it's super forgiving. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this stamp off. I'm just grabbing a little baby wipe because it was handy. And now I'm going to switch to back to the dapper denim again. And this time we're going to do the bubbles for the other fish. So I'm going to go ahead and do one here. Whoops. Just slid that. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and do bubbles there. Whoops, sorry, just banged the video. One there, and then one here. Now I'll go and fill in my little um, starfish. On the other video, I did that backwards. So when I got ink over here, so I'm going to try and cover that. I'm going to go ahead and stamp off on these and then stamp this over. Just kind of random, filling in the spots. But I'm just stamping off in between. Just to kind of give a variation in colors. And we'll do one over here, and I don't know, I guess that's good. Less is more, right? That looks good. All right, so there's that. So now our layering parts are done. I am going to take my crumb cake ink, because you all know I can't make a card without crumb cake, and I'm just going to kind of grunge up those edges a little bit. I like that vintagey look, so I um, opted to do this. But if you like bright, stark, white, and kind of bold cards, you could certainly leave it without this. I'm a vintagey kind of girl. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up all the way around each of the layers. I think these look kind of fun, too, just by themselves when you look at them. It's kind of a fun little pattern. Of course, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't look like anything, but it's... Still a fun pattern. Depending on what um, stamp you're using, you can actually use these pieces individually afterwards too, and it looks kind of fun. Um, this one doesn't really work as well that way, but it is still kind of cool to look at. All right, so there is that. Now I'm gonna start assembling these pieces. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and put this large piece down to my card base. And We'll do that. Okay, next up. It works better, like you could layer this on top of here, but I think it works better if you tape the white piece to the coral piece first. So I'm gonna tape that down, and this is actually upside down at the moment, but it's no worries, because we'll just flip it. And now, when you go to put this on, it's easier because you can kind of see how to line up those pieces. So now I can go ahead and tape that down and line up these. Okay. 
That looks good. Now the last layer, we're going to go ahead and put that down. And then we have that. And now I can put this down. And you could add dimension between these layers, but because they're like lining up images, I just I just kind of like to do them flat. But you could certainly um, do them popped too. The other reason why I like to do them flat is because there's so many layers on there, these cards, they can be a little bit heavier and therefore they can require a little bit of extra postage on their own. So um, any more bulk is going to make it even heavier. So I'm going to use, whoops, wrong one. I'm going to use my two-inch circle punch and a scrap piece of the dapper denim. This is going to be for my uh, circle element. And I apologize. I had done all of this in advance before. And um, I forgot to do it before I started rolling. So we're going to do it with you. All right. So next up, I'm going to take the cute little anchor image. And I'm going to ink that with the dapper denim. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that on a scrap piece of Whisper White. And then I'm going to take the one and three quarters inch punch and punch that out. Okay, and again, I'm going to use my crumb cake ink to rough that up a little bit. And this has probably still got enough ink in it that I'm just going to go ahead and use the sponge. I don't even need the ink pad. All right, and then I can tape this down to here. And I am going to pop this up, even though it's going to add a little bit of um, bulk to the card. I just like how that looks. And I am adding a little bit of extra dimensionals on here because I'm going to attach some ribbon. And this time I'm using ribbon that's from Celebration, um, which is no longer available uh, if you purchased during Celebration and ordered this. This ribbon is really beautiful. It comes in silver and gold. Um, I had used, if you notice on the original, I had just enough for two cards. I'd used the fun um, natural ribbon with the gold inlay. Um, but when somebody called me, and it wasn't any of you, don't worry, um, it, it, uh, messed up that video and I had to start all over and I don't have another third piece. It was literally like my last little scrap of it. But no worries. There's always something to improvise. So I'm going to use this one. And this is why I used extra dimensionals because um, I'm covering a lot of them with my ribbon. Just to kind of contain it. I'll put another one right there. Alright, so now I can go ahead. This one needs to be a little bit bigger. Loop. So I'm going to pull that off and make it a bigger loop there okay and then I can put that in this bottom corner like that and then the last step is just to do um, a little I took a little scrap piece of crumb cake and again I apologize I didn't have this out to the scrap piece here this is a big scrap piece but whatever and I took the crumb cake ink and I went ahead and stamped that and then cut it out. Okay, and through the magic, I hand cut that myself. I paused you for a minute so that I could do that without you having to watch me cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use my regular adhesive, maybe, if it's gonna work. Here we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick that down in the center of my little anchor. And I kind of put that on crooked, so I'm going to fix that. And there you go. Version number three today. So I'm on a roll. I've got three of these for you. So maybe one of you will get these. I've got plenty of thank you cards, which I have to get caught up on anyway. So this will probably go in my stash of those. And I will hopefully get caught up on all of those this week. I've got a great big stash that I need to do. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me and my little stamping business. I so appreciate each and every one of you. And I will catch you next time for Teach Me Tuesday. I hope um, you'll subscribe to my channel as well if you liked this video and I would truly appreciate it. So catch you next week. Have a great one. Bye-bye.